Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jonathan Fox and in this series of videos we are learning Slack app development using Slack Bolt. We're building in JavaScript and in the previous video we added some visual aspect to our app homepage. Let's have a look at Slack just for a refresher. So if we head over to Slack, what we can see is what we did in the previous video where we added this um, home page, a little bit of text and a button. In this video, um, I'm going to show how we can make this button here interactive and actually do something. So first of all, what we need to do is head over to api.slack.com and head to our apps configuration. Notice here I'm already on the page within the configuration um, settings. I need to head to in interactivity and shortcuts. So interactivity is where we can handle any, any actions that we do, such as clicking the button. Now, for an action, such as clicking a button, we need a request URL. You could have a completely different endpoint if you wanted, but because we're using Slack Bolt and it's handled through um, the same features and functionalities bundled up um, and routed for us, we're going to use the same um, URL that we used for our event um, subscriptions. So you'll notice it's exactly the same. A point to note, just like in the last video, if you've stopped your ng rock and your app um, after since watching the previous video, um, you will need to update the URL in both the event subscriptions and here to the your new uh, ng rock URL. So what I've done is I've toggled the switch to on, I've added my URL, and that's as much as I need to do now. So let's head over to um, VS Code and see what functionality and what code I've written to enable a bit more interactivity with our app. So you'll remember from the previous video, this is what we had built so far. We had built our app, started our app, and whenever somebody opened the home page of the app, we sent um, a message to the user saying hello world, um, and that appeared in the message section of the app. And in the previous video, that was the first video, in the previous video, we added this where we use the views uh, publish uh, feature to publish um, a view here in a JSON payload that we actually built using Slack block kit builder. Now, the only difference between the previous video and this video that I've added today is this here. On our button, after the element, uh, as, as another element, I've added action ID and button. That's the only change I've made from the previous video. In this video, what we are going to look at is the action um, function for the app. Now here, what I've done is we're using app.action and we're listening for our action button um, to be triggered. From there, we're utilizing the body. I'll talk about ACK in a minute and the claim. So whenever we have an action and something is posted to our request URL, our app must respond an acknowledgement within three seconds. That is the requirements of Slack apps. So that's why I've posted, uh, I have written here await ACK and use that uh, function. That responds back to Slack to say we have received the, uh, uh, from the response URL, we've received uh, the event, uh, the trigger, and we are processing it. This is where we now carry out our functionality. I've done some login, um, but what I have done is updated the view. Now, rather than using client.views.publish, I'm doing client.views.update because I don't want to publish a brand new um, view. I just want to update it, keeping the context, keeping the um, relevance of what we're doing. We're not just overwriting it with a new view, although we could do that. Um, when it comes to later functionality, we don't want to just plain overwrite it. We want to keep that context, um, which is why we're doing the update. What I'm passing is the view ID because I need my Slack app needs to tell Slack which view to update. And that's through the view ID. Now, because I'm using body.view.id that I've passed in here, and that's part of the Slack um, bolt again, um, through the actions function, I can reference the view that was clicked and re-reference the ID that the view belongs to. 
I'm using hash to um, prevent any race conditions so we know what the um, view was, uh, the current state of the view before um, I interact back with it. And then I'm simply again using Slack block kit to post a, an update to the view, changing how I want it to look. And then naturally I'm going to catch any errors um, just at this moment in time, log in them. So fairly simple functionality, but this is where on the back of a click of a button, using the button's ID, I carry out some functionality. In this case, updating the view. In your case, you may want to do something else like a HTTP request to a different external service or query a database and show that data in the app home to the user. So if we to head over to Slack and when we click the click me button, what we actually get is the view updated, the button was clicked. Quite simple. What we can see here as well in the, uh, in the logs, we can see that when the button was clicked, the information about the view, the user and the action is logged because I log it here. And this is how I determined where to find things such as the view ID um, and the, the, the body hash as well. A really quite simple, straightforward video, but showing that this is a simple step in order now to create your really powerful app. You can expand on this now to be able to really build out that functionality from a simple view update to actually building out your business processes in the app home. Now, if you head over to the Slack um, modules and learn Slack development, the Slack app home is a really good place to show current information pertinent to you about that particular app's functionality, such as a dashboard of reports or something simple like the current weather. This, this is where you can really have some interactivity with your app um, rather than messages and modals. I hope that was useful. In the next video, we are going to be looking at um, extending this functionality with some modals um, and looking more away from the Slack um, app home and how the Slack app can interact within channels. Until next time, thank you very much for uh, watching um, and goodbye. Mm -hmm.